Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4. I'm going to continue my message from, uh, or continue on my message or my series on grace gifts. We talked about it, uh, started it last week. Out of Ephesians 4, where I, I, I put the challenge out really that we're all ministers and, uh, and Holy Spirit is in us. Uh, and the time for excuses um, is gone because Holy Spirit's calling us to be ministers of his word and his life. I want to continue about that this morning um, out of Ephesians 4. So we'll read again. Um, I'm only going to read uh, this morning through to verse 6. Last time I read all the way through to verse 13. So if you weren't here, um, you can catch the video on YouTube um, of the message if you want to. And I read through to verse 13, but today we're just going to go uh, Ephesians 4, 1 to 6. So I'll jump straight in there. As a prisoner of the Lord, I plead with you to walk holy in a way that is suitable to your high rank given to you in your divine calling. With tender humility and quiet patience, always demonstrate gentleness and generous love toward one another, especially towards those who may try your patience. Be faithful to guard the sweet harmony of the Holy Spirit among you in the bonds of peace, being one body and one spirit, as you were all called into the same glorious hope of divine destiny. For the Lord God is one, and so are we. For we share in one faith, one baptism, and one Father. And he is the perfect Father who leads us all, works through us all, And lives in us all. I stumbled over the same word last week. That's classic. I'll read that again. And he is the perfect father who leads us all. Works through us all. And lives in us all. Amen. An awesome passage. It continues on. But I want to talk about um, this morning that the, uh, the idea, the foundation of the gifts operating is unity. Sometimes, um, and I, I've said this before from the pulpit, and I'll explain what I just said, uh, starting with this. Western culture is, has become hugely individualistic. It's all about uh, me, myself, and I, my purpose, my call, my destiny, uh, what I can do. Now, I'm saying... I, I, I want to challenge that this morning because I don't think that is the full picture. I think yes and amen to that. Yes, it is true. You are an individual. But the kingdom of God is about body. It's about family. It's about togetherness. It's about this idea that we can do more together than we can apart. And it's something that is all through Scripture. God didn't choose... Uh, an individual to stay an individual. When he chose Abraham, he chose him to be what? The father of many nations. It was never about one person. It was always about the whole. And yet one person was important in that picture. And today I, I really absolutely firmly am convinced of this idea that for us to see the fullness of God working in revival across our land... We need to get out of this mindset that it's all about me as the church. Because sometimes the answer to your challenges and the things you face are not you, it's actually someone else. Because someone else has a gifting, someone else has a a talent, someone else has an ability that you need to be able to, to partner with you, to connect with you, to enable you to get where God's calling us to go. Does that make sense? There's this idea of mystery for me that that in my partnering with the whole, somehow that releases me into all that God's got for me. And at the same time as I step into what God's got for me, I'm releasing others into what God's got for them. And together as the body, we move forward and we grow and we multiply and we increase the impact of the kingdom on this earth. Like that to me is exciting. But it it really challenges me. I look at this passage and I say, 
I look at it in Paul and in his experience of planning churches, of working with people of all different backgrounds, all different ethnicities, all different experiences of faith. He doesn't here land on the fact that you need to get your doctrine and your theology right. He lands on the fact that we need to preserve and work hard to maintain the unity of the Spirit because we are one people with one God, with one faith and one baptism. And you could argue about what all that means, but actually the whole point of that understanding was not to know what that baptism actually meant or what that faith actually meant. It was actually to realize, and the emphasis that Paul was trying to say was the word one, that you are one, that you are unified, that you're called to be a body. Yes, there's diversity amongst us, but we're called to be one. And the only way to find that oneness is we actually allow Holy Spirit to work through us to build us into what he has already declared is true. Does that make sense? That was a very overwhelming answer. (laughs) Verse 3 says this, Be faithful to guard the sweet harmony of the Holy Spirit among you in the bonds of peace. Be faithful to guard it. In Psalm 133, it says this, How wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers and sisters live together in harmony. For harmony is as precious as the anointing oil that was poured over Aaron's head that ran down his beard and onto the border of his robe. Harmony is as refreshing as the dew from Mount Hermon that falls on the mountains of Zion. And there the Lord has pronounced his blessing, even life everlasting. This idea that, that David grabbed was, was this beautiful idea that when we live in harmony, that that is as valuable as the anointing of Holy Spirit on our lives. In fact, I would go as far as to say that if we're not in harmony and in unity as brothers and sisters, then we break the anointing of the Holy Spirit over our lives. Because if you read that passage, it talks about this idea that uh, that Aaron was anointed. He was anointed on his head with oil and it ran from his head all the way down his body. It covered through his beard and went down his clothing to the fringes, to the borders of his garment. Now, the only way that happens is if it has, if the garment is complete. You with me? One of the things that I think we have uh, suffered from in the past as the body of Christ is we have allowed the garment that we are to be torn, to be ripped, to be damaged. And in doing so, we disturb the flow of the anointing of Christ through his body and over his body, which is us, the church. One of the things that you'll, um, you can read about it if you read through the story of the crucifixion of Jesus is it talks about his, uh, his clothes that he was wearing when he, uh, when he was crucified. And one of the descriptions of his, his robe that he was wearing is that it was without join and it was complete in one piece of material from the top to the bottom. It was complete. There weren't any joins. There weren't... And, and what happened afterwards was it was so valuable as a complete piece with no joins, with no seams, with no uh, nothing in it. It was so valuable that the soldiers were casting lots as to who would have his clothes. Because it was a valuable thing. It was a thing that even the, uh, even the Gentile soldiers realized there was something about his robe, his cloak that was valuable enough that we want to gamble for it. I 
I want to place a challenge to us today as KIC, as the church here, as part of the bigger church, but it starts with us, is are we faithfully guarding the harmony of the Holy Spirit? Because if we want to see revival, if we want to see Holy Spirit moving amongst us and out of us into the world around us in ways uh, that are signs and wonders, that are demonstrations of His goodness and His love to this world, and and where we see people being healed, where we see uh, lives being transformed, where we see issues being resolved, that requires us to guard the unity of the Spirit. Because if we're to see revival come, It requires us to be unified. It requires us to be preserving, guarding, keeping the sweet harmony of the Holy Spirit amongst us. I think that sometimes we get so caught up in this idea where we let the world's view of things where it's all about me, that that becomes so part of the way we view faith and the way we view journey of following Jesus that it actually hinders us in seeing the purposes of God outworked through us. Because we get so offended so quickly when someone says something we disagree with. Or as Paul says here uh, in this thing, when we find people who try our patience. Instead of continuing to guard unity in the bonds of peace, we allow those things to create division, to create separation, to create challenges amongst us. When God is calling us to be people who live in the harmony, the unity of the Spirit, because we are one body, We have one spirit, the spirit of God, who lives in all of us. We have one faith in Jesus, one baptism, and one Father of all. I was going to go on to some other things, but I'll I'll stop there because I think it's probably enough for us to wrestle with. So one of the things for me is we send a team out to to Borneo. We remember we, in my head, I go. If this is about the unity of the spirit and we're one body, that means that part of us is going to Indonesia. So there's a bit of us is going to be a, a way away. But that bit needs our support as much as if it was close, right? In the wider body of Christ, I look back and I think, you know, with Colin's testimony about him and Lainey sponsoring a child, you know, one of the things I firmly believe is that as we have supported what's been going on in Living Waters Village and we've seen seeing them impact lives over the, over the years, it's been thousands of children whose destiny has shifted in the time that we've been connected with them, every one of those children is part of the ministry of this church. We might not be on the ground seeing those lives changed, but because we have partnered with them and because of the unity of the Spirit across thousands of kilometers, what they're doing is what we're doing. And what we're doing is what they're doing. There's this idea that we are together because we all serve with one spirit. We're all one body. We can talk about it here locally, but it also impacts internationally. It also impacts nationally within within our country. The body of Christ is called to be one. If you read towards the end of the chapter, the declaration Paul says is that some sometime in verse 13 it says, finally we become one into a perfect man with the full dimensions of spiritual maturity and fully developed into the abundance of Christ. 
That's not just something for us to experience as a church. That's for something for the whole church across the whole of the globe. We're part of that. So your choices that you make today are not just about you. They're about me. They're about us. They're about the kingdom of God. Because you have a significant part to play in the body of Christ. As I talked about last week, you have a divine calling. You have something that you bring that no one else brings to the body. And we need you to function in that. And But it's not just about you. It's also as you function in that, you need me to function in what God's called me to be. You need others around you who are functioning in what God's called them to be because sometimes the purpose of God is unlocked in your life through the others that are around you. And that's an amazing thing. You know, and even as we were prophesying this morning and, you know, what we experienced uh, last week in uh, Encounter Night, you know, those moments when you feel like you have a word of encouragement for someone else, you unlock something in their lives when you do that. When we're sharing what God has given us with others, we unlock things in each other's lives that begin to reveal the beauty and the amazing plan of God, which is to bring everything together as one under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Amen. So my encouragement this morning is to us, let's guard, let's keep the sweet harmony of the Holy Spirit among us. And allow him to lead us into everything he's got for us together and individually. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for your presence here. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're working amongst us. That there are not, that you're not broken into bits. And a bit is placed here and a bit is placed there. And this person's got more of you and this person's got less. But God, you are one spirit and you are residing in full power and full presence in every single one of the persons who are in this room today and that somehow together we also bring a beauty and a depth and a vibrancy and a diversity to that picture but God we just honor the fact that you have entrusted your presence to us and I pray that you'd help us to live conscious of your presence every moment of every day. To live conscious of the calling that we have with you. But also to live conscious of the fact that we are not called to be alone, but we are called to be one together as your body. And I pray you would continue to reveal what that means to us that we would continue to walk in to the fullness of what you have for us as a people and as your church. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.